It's me, Danny Peaks. I've got a little problem I need cutting down. Goes by the name of Graham. Since you're buying a chainsaw, a tarpaulin and some rope, you don't need to buy, let's say, a shovel or some garden ties or rolls of industrial black tape before store policy dictates I have to alert the authorities, sir. Well, I do need a shovel. Hello, Graham. I've sorted your problem. Danny's preparing for a little visit. Cat Noir presents Big Trouble with Little China. Episode 1. Written and performed by Kevin Chilvers and Matt Sanders. Carol, I've got the stuff from the hardware shop. Where are you? I'm in the summer house, Danny. I'm on the phone. Okay, on me way. Yeah, that's right. My name's Carol. Carol Peaks, Nitro. Why do you keep saying that? Never forget where you come from, Danny. J-Lo taught me that. Her maiden name was Block. Now, I don't think that's true. Yes, yes, that's my address. Danny, we've got a parcel coming. Really? I haven't ordered anything. You? Nah. Maybe it's a wedding present from your mum. Now, I very much doubt that, Carol. When Graham got married, she gave him a box of dog biscuits. What? Right now? And he doesn't even have a dog. Danny, they're going to drop the parcel off in ten seconds. Oh, and Susie's on her way around too. We've got a hair appointment at three. Susie? Great. Let's hope she's not bringing her husband with her. Now, now, that's your brother you're chatting about. Yep, I do know. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, sounds like they're here now. Bye. That'll be the delivery people, Danny. Do you want to let them in? Yeah, all right. Danny Peaks? Who wants to know? I am Jazzy Leafblower. I have a gift for you. These goons, I mean delivery drivers, will put it on the grass. Allo? Well, it's just a big white box. It doesn't have anything written on it. Who sent it? <coughs> Sends his regards. Sorry, I didn't hear you. If you could tell me again, but this time, don't bash those dustbin lids over my head. I'm very sorry that just happened. These goons, I mean delivery drivers, don't understand how much your hearing could have been impaired by smashing those dustbin lids over your head. What? Are you some kind of health and safety inspector? Yes, actually, I am. Oh. Oi, open, open this gate. No, I don't think so. And I'll be leaving a damning review on Google. Danny, what's happened here? Don't panic, Carol. Just run to the house and press the panic alarm. But you said don't panic. Yeah, I did, yeah. Oh, no. The present's opening up. Shall I panic now? Not yet. What about now? Uh, it's only seven martial arts experts. With machine guns. Sorry, love. I'm only human. Panic! No, not that way, Carol. Why is it always ninjas? Let me in. Not by the hairs on your long, pointy, chinny chin, ruddy chin. Then I'll half and I'll puff and I'll kick your back gate in. Sorry about that. Uh, mind yourself, there are a lot of splinters. All right, I've had enough now. Eat rake. You do know people can't eat rakes. Well, let's find out. Yeah. That's it. Too hard. Get off me, ninjas. Hold on, I'm really sorry to have to do this, Mr. Pete. It really is against my nature. He's out cold. Back in the game. Ninjas, don't just stand there. Go get the girl. Why, <laughs> eight? Oh, my God, Danny. Oh, Susie, what's going on? My head is ringing. No, I think it's this alarm clock. Why are you leaning in the garden? The back gate's broken. Oh, no. Carol. Where is she, Danny? Is she okay? We got attacked. She's run towards the house in a panic. Don't worry, love. I'll go. You just lay there and have a nice rest. Oh, right. Very kind. Hello, hello, hello. What do we have here, then? A cliché copper, by the sounds of it. I am PC Nick Sunshine. Well, it's a good job you're here. I've been attacked by ninjas, and my brother's wife is just checking Carol's okay. Oh, ninjas. Happens all the time. Tell me about it. I just did. However, I am not here for that, sir. I am following up on a report we had concerning a recent purchase you made at Slate's Garden Supplies and Hardware. Great timing. I have information. You obtained a chainsaw, tarpaulin, rope and a shovel. And that made my spider sense go, woohoo, like an alarmed ghost. Uh, yeah, I may have bought those items. What of it? Have you ever heard the phrase, murder kit, sir? 
Um, is it the child of a murder cat? Oh, don't have an answer for that. <clears throat> Daddy, I can't find Carol anywhere. Those goons must have kidnapped her whilst I was out cold. I don't know who they were, but when I find them... You'll what, sir? Use the chainsaw you brought? As if. I got it to, uh, well, uh, cut some lengths off my brother's wooden stilts. Is he a clown, sir? Because if not, that literally sounds like the first thing that came into your head. I feel we may have some questions for you down the station. Look, I ain't got time for this. I need to find my wife. Please come quietly, sir, or I'll have to restrain you using my recent handcuff training. Unlikely, chump. Please don't call me a chump. Oh, I said champ. Catch you later, Susie. You'll know where to find me if you hear anything. No problem then, Danny. I'll see you at the shop. Don't say that in front of him. I didn't mention it was Graham's antique crockery shop. Oh, for God's sake. Please come back, sir. I haven't had my running training yet. To all units, all units. Be on the lookout for an icy one male, five nine, black hair in a tan leather jacket. Yes, I am aware that description covers most of the male population of the country. But it's Danny Peaks. Everyone knows him. Okay, not everyone then. Don't worry, I've got a family member in custody. Oh, she's run off. Uh, oh, hello. What do we have here? Oh, just a pet, are you? Well, we'll soon see about that. Down the station. Danny, Graham, you after some china? I've got a nice teapot that will look good in your kitchen. Now, I don't drink tea. But that's not what I've heard. Right. Look, I've come to get Carol back. Carol? I don't have Carol. Only the best quality bone china this side of Penribbit. You sent some ninjas to kidnap her. Ninjas? It's always bloody ninjas with you, innit? I haven't got Carol. Oh. All right. You heard anything on the grapevine, then? Nah. But I can check. Jack, bring the grapevine. On the way. Danny? Hang on, aren't you the guy who works at the hardware store? Yeah. Well, thanks to you, I got the fuzz on me back. There's a razor you can get to sort that. Yeah, funny guy. Right, let's have a look. Oh, oh I can see in the mists. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there's something coming. And, oh yeah, something. Uh-huh. Mm, oh, and it's big. A bit quicker. I can hear rumours. And, whoa. And, Nothing. Take the grapevine away, Jack. Thanks. Oh. Well, that was a waste of time. You know how hard this will be for me to ask, but I'm going to need your help, Graham. Do you believe in magic? Black magic? What, like the chocolates? No, obviously not. Uh, the song by Little Mix? No, be serious. This is important. Do you believe in black magic? Oh, of course, yeah. I've read Demonology. Re- really? What, the one by King James? Um, no, I think it was Dan Brown. And what opinion did Dan Brown help you formulate? That I should read less. Look, are you serious about this? I suppose you think there's monsters and ghosts too? Yeah. And you expect me to believe in sorcery as well? Of course. Why? Because it's real. I didn't think you were so gullible, Graham. Oh yeah? Well watch this. Give me a bullseye. Not bloody likely. I'm not giving you 50 notes. Don't worry, you'll get it back. I better do. Thank you, Danny. You'll soon believe in magic now. Watch this note very closely. I'm watching. Now we're quits. What? That's not magic. You put it in your jeans. That's just robbery. Danny? Graham? Susie, my love. I'll get a room, you two. We have a room. We own the shop. Have you found Carol yet, Danny? She hasn't made contact with me, and we've got a hair in the point within an hour. Nah, but Graham's been showing me some wonderful magic. I remember Paul Daniels putting the same trick on me back when I was a kid. Have you shown him those tunnels yet? Nah, he obviously doesn't need my help. What? What tunnels? And what have they got to do with my Carol being kidnapped? We found this disused mine under the shop. I've spent a personal fortune excavating it. Props were added and we're looking at filling the tunnels with concrete to keep the shop safe. However, whilst the workmen were down there, they found this. What's this? An antique bone china cup. Well, that's all well and good, Graham. But what's it got to do with my carol? Read the inscription. Uh, let's see. In loving memory of Mrs. Peaks. What's this? Some kind of sick joke? Five people died, ensuring this ended up in my shop. 
There was a little accident. Look, I don't care. I just want Carol back. I checked some reference books, Danny. And there's a source at a match. But we haven't found it yet. Word is, one of the workers sold it at an antique shop. Well, why don't you ask one of the workers? I would. Only, unfortunately, uh, work had to stop after that rather little nasty accident. Listen, I've got the law after me and Carol is missing. I don't know where to start looking for her. This cup is the only clue I have. There's more. Look at this book. The cup's over 10,000 years old, Danny. And I'm pretty sure Carol ain't that old. Hmm. I need to see those tunnels. Now. Jack's going to follow us down to the first intersection. Then he'll be ready if we need him. Sweet. I'll get you to where the cup was found and we can go from there. Yeah, OK. Uh, look, are you sure we need all this stuff in these rucksacks? Absolutely. There's a crossword puzzle book in mine. That's in case you get bored and you need something to do. Yeah, but isn't it dark down there? Yeah, but you could always use your torch. But there's no pen. Oh, for God's sake. Jack, there's no pen in Danny's backpack. It's in the side pocket. What? Oh, yeah. Got it. Perfect. I hope you're not trying to go without me. Uh, absolutely not. Right, let's go. <clears throat> I just need Graham to show me where the cup was found, Susie. I can do the rest on my own. Typical man. Actually, I'm not a typical man. I have a sensitive side. It says so on my toothpaste tube. And I'm in touch with nature. Because your best mate's a heron? No, 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 no. Warren's not me best mate. I think of him more like a, uh, a stalker. He just always seems to be there. Anyway, I have a dog. No, you don't. Oh, yeah, you're right. I've never walked it. It must be a cat. What, Mr. Moggy? I thought he was a parrot. Nah, you're thinking of Pazza, the crying canary. He died. I thought Pazza was a gerbil. And didn't you have a hamster called Herbal Gerbil? Nah, that was Mars Horse. I do, however, remember having a stick insect called Horsey. That was my stick insect. And it was called Grasshopper. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'm not as in touch with nature as I thought. Lovely, but I'm still coming down the tunnels with you. All right, all right. Jack, bring another rucksack. I thought I saw you lock the shop door. I did. Get out of the back, all of you, now. OK, clear. Good evening. I am sorry to come so late at night. How did you get in here? I opened the door. It was locked. With a lock pick. I don't often have visitors at this time. That's because you are shit. What did you say? The shop is shit. How dare you? Oh, I am so sorry. My English pronunciations are not always right. Uh, the shop is closed. Oh, you meant the shop is shut. Did I? Uh, yes, I think I did. Who are you and what do you want? I am Dr. Ceramicist von der Walk, renowned porcelain and ceramic expert. I have been on the Antiques Roadshow. Wow, it's, a, it's an honour. You've come to the right place. Peaks Porcelain has the best bow china this side of Penribbit. Yes. But I am not in need of a tawdry mug set to commemorate the marriage of Prince Charles and Lady Diana. Rude. Well, what do you want then? There is a certain cup I am interested in. I have been led to believe you may know where I can find it. I don't know what you're talking about. The Peaks piece. I beg your pardon? You know what I am talking about. I will pay a very high price for it. Yeah, but Danny... Uh... Danny? Yeah, it's a family matter. Listen to me. I am prepared to make the transaction worth your while. I offer a small fortune. How much? Four. Four pounds? That's amazing. Oh, no, 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 no. Good grief, no. Four hundred quid? No, 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 no. Four thousand No, no, no. Let me get a bloody word in. I am offering four million pounds, Mr. Peaks. Four million. Graham, we need to get going. Yes, Danny. I think I might need to just sit down for a bit first. Graham! Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you're right. I'm not interested. Thanks, though. Then you refuse my offer? Sorry, look, I am really conflicted, but it's a no from me. I see. Then I only have the one other option. Graham, why has this joker got a machine gun? He wants the cup, Danny. Give it to me. Shall we run off? Yeah. 
fast. Leg it! We have you surrounded, Mr. Peaks. Please come out with your hands up. And you in there, firing that machine gun. Please be very careful. You may hurt someone or damage property. And nobody wants that. Oh, great. The coppers are found me already. That didn't take them long. Graham, what's happening? It's time to leave. Look, everyone in the tunnels. Jack, you're going to stay here. You're going to put the board back over the hole. They won't know where we've gone. All right? Now cover us and try not to get shot. Yes, yes, and a double yes on the last one. What, down here? Yeah. Torch is on. Let's go. Good luck. It's just a little further down here. Cool, you had some right cowboys working down here. Looks like I could kick one of these posts over and the old place would come crashing down on top of us. Well, don't do that. Oh, all right, I won't. Hey, watch out for that hole. What hole? Oh, I've got you. Wait, you were just in my pockets. Uh, I think this belongs to me. The 50, damn you. Uh -huh. Will you two stop clowning around? He started it. Shut up. I can hear people talking. Stop wriggling. It's costing me a fortune in plastic ties. Yes, it probably isn't very comfortable. That's the nature of being kidnapped. It's not a holiday on the broads. Listen, it's the bloke that kidnapped Carol. Wait till I get my hands on him. Don't go charging off. It might be a trap. Wait, what's that on your back? Hold on, I got it. You've, uh, you've just stolen the 50 back, haven't you? Maybe. Hang on, where's Susie? Well, she was just here. Well, she isn't now. That bloke must have taken her with her whilst we weren't looking. Blimey. We better go down into the cavern and see what's going on. I don't remember this being here last time I came down. Down, down. Looks freshly dug out. Ow, ow. There's someone coming quick behind that rock. Rock, rock. Look, it's Carol. She's tied up. Susie's there too. They're with that guy who came to my house. Looks like he's got a sword. Did you bring any weapons, Graham? Oh, I didn't really have any time to grab anything. I see. I'll have to make do with what I have. Where's that pen? You can come out now. How? Now? Ground? Cow? Uh, no thanks. Let Carol and Susie go and throw yourself onto some rocks or there's gonna be some trouble. Rubble. Hubble telescope. No thanks. Tanks. Tom Hanks. The rocks here are quite dangerous enough without me moving around on them too much. Monster Munch. Captain Crunch. Yeah, okay. Then I can't be held responsible for what is going to happen. Apple. Apron. Sorry, Danny. I took the inside of the pen when you weren't looking. Now come out here. I won't tell you twice. I won't tell you twice. What's going on, Susie? Bluesy. Oozy. I think you've been dumped, mate. Hey, shot to play. Susie? Choosy. Moosley? Come here, you two, so our words don't echo. Echo, 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 echo. Don't come too close. As I mentioned before, these rocks are incredibly dangerous and I wouldn't want anyone to slip, fall and die. Carol, you're not even gagged. Sorry Danny, just finishing the cream bun they gave me for lunch. Oh, I see. You alright? Yeah, she is now, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to sacrifice her. What? You see, her death will allow the mighty sorcerer Rimmy some time to be reborn in her body. The prophecy was on the cup, Danny. I mean... It was pretty bloody vague. In loving memory of Mrs. Peaks. So, hang on. You're gonna kill Carol to reanimate a sorcerer? Yeah, that's the plan. Look, I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but you really are asking for a Darwin war by standing that close to the edge of this rock pile. Are you trying to impress someone? Because it won't impress the health and safety executive. Those rocks are the very definition of wobbly. <sighs> I knew I shouldn't have worn those heels. <sighs> of course. Oh dear. Susie! No! We didn't finish signing the life insurance documents. Every time we do a sacrifice, this happens. Somebody always dies. We need better signage in here. Oh, Graham, I'm so sorry. She's dead. Her neck is broken. Ah, my Susie. Ah! Hang on. What's going on here? That is not right. You're telling me. She never used to float on air and shimmer like a golden butterfly. Well, she does now. Master. Yes, yes, I like it. I am alive again. Rimmy to time has been born. Yes, yes, good times. These are the good times. <laughs> Listen, you can funk off, chump. I'll soon sort you out. You'll have to wait a fortnight, Mr. Peaks, as it's the end of the episode.
<laughs> what? Oh. All right, then. You've been listening to Cat Noir Presents Big Trouble with Little China. Episode 1, written, produced, recorded, and edited by Matt Saunders and Kevin Chalmers. Promotional material by Laurie Stone. Give us a like and subscribe wherever you heard us. And if you like what we do, please leave us a review. Follow us on Instagram at Cat Noir Podcast and join us again in two weeks to see how I get out of this one.